This game is rated M and is intended for mature audiences. Well, hopefully you don't deal with the problem at hand by blowing up the school again. Or by getting Michiru to blow up the school. Our classmates welcomed Michiru's return to the dormitory happily. Even more than the all-clear from her medical examination, they were encouraged by the dramatic improvement in her mood. The girl's been moving through her normal daily routine as the usual Michiru. Nobody seems to have caught on to the fundamental change that's taken place deep inside her. But as the true Michiru's absence stretches into days, some of her friends seem to be vaguely beginning to sense her subtle transformation. Oh, it's you. Go ahead, I'll answer if I can. <laughs> Is she smoking cigarettes now? Oh, how do you mean? I see. Something seems strange about her, do you? Tricky question. Well, I don't think it's anything you need to worry about. You gotta watch your solar plexus, that's for sure. Hmm, you do that. I don't have the slightest idea what a wumbling solar plexus might indicate. Probably just mashing together words she picked up from somewhere at random again. In any case, it's clear that Makina's starting to notice the change in her friend. The last time I had a face-to-face -face conversation with Michiru was the morning I welcomed her home from the hospital with Sachi. After her return to the dorm, the girl's been beating a quick retreat every time it seems like we might end up alone together. To put it simply, she's blatantly avoiding me. And that's the only strength in my determination to force her into a lone talk. I need to know what the true Michiru was thinking when she decided to disappear from this world. Oh boy, sad music again. I'm passing by Michiru's room when I hear the sound of someone clattering around inside. Barging in right now would almost be like cornering her for an interrogation. I hesitate for a moment, but the chance is just too good to pass up. I knock sharply on the door, then enter the room without waiting for a response. Michiru, we need to have a serious... What? It's you? Why so shocked? It's true. Sachi's actually not a robot. I couldn't believe it, but it's true. Yeah, just a minor errand. So what are you doing in here? With these words, Sachi produces the small, sturdy box from the other day. I reflexively reach out as if to take it from her hands, but realize halfway through just how strange that would seem. My outstretched arm, losing its purpose, surrenders to gravity and listlessly drops back to my side. Oh, so much. No, not really, but... Are you really determined to look inside that thing? Uh-oh, she's going to find out we read Mishira's private diary. Empty? Oh, yeah, I guess I did say that. Unlocked? What? A glance confirms that the box is indeed unsecured. I'm sure I locked it after nosing around the inside the other day. Why would it be... I instinctively reach out again to, in reaction to the strange sight, but this time my timing's bad. I bump Sachi's arm just as she's shifting the box in her hands, and the jolt sends the small chest tumbling to the floor below. No, I I'm sorry. That was my fault. Yeah, that it is. Quite empty. Just as I said, there's nothing inside. It's just an empty wooden box. Sachi wipes the dust from its interior with a small cloth, then returns it to the closet. Tell me, Sachi, was this box empty from the start? 
と言ってもさっき落とした時に初めて中を見たんですけど。I see. In that case, never mind. Way to be super suspicious. Makina can clean her own room. Makina needs some responsibility in her life. Go ahead. Don't worry. I'm sure Michiru won't mind me being here. Are you going to hide in her closet? <laughs> like a punk? I also just realized that I believe Michiru has a Jigglypuff plush on her dresser. That's kind of amazing. It's a little deformed, but it looks like a Jigglypuff. I sit down on the bed and lightly roll my shoulders. There were definitely notebooks and pictures in that box. Their disappearance has to mean that the current Michiru disposed of them after her return. Honestly. Guess it's about time I did something here. That's my line. What happened to the contents of that box? Those aren't the sort of things you throw away without permission, woman. Not really. You see, this is Michiru's room, not yours. With those words, Michiru throws herself down on the bed next to me. Seemingly indifferent to the concept of personal space, she settles in extremely close. Oh, I thought she was about to strangle us. <laughs> The girl peers into my face as she speaks. Her expression is serious. I don't think this girl is the bad guy, I just think it's a weird situation. I didn't say you're to blame. No, Yuchi just has a natural glare on his face 24-7. I think the only time I've seen Yuji smile is A in the flashback CG and B in one of the really weird like manga panels, but it's just an imagined spot of him with the shark pouch. Like, duh! It's unnatural. <laughs> yes, I know that much. She has a point. What exactly happened to Michiru? I have my theories, but I don't know anything for a fact. You're right. I'm sorry. Please tell me what's going on. With a deep sigh of resignation, Michiru resumes the conversation on a markedly different note. Never coming back again? Sorry to interrupt you. Oh, another Michiru flashback. I want it all to end. The world is just too sad. Why do people die? Why do we have to leave each other? Nobody can give me a good answer. I'm the most worthless person in this world. So why do I have to force myself to go on living this pathetic, miserable little life? This is sad to read. It wouldn't be so bad if I was just an inferior to everybody else, but I'm not even the best me inside of me. It's really painful. Really sad. What's the point of my existence? Nobody's telling me. Why do the friends who treat me kindly all go away? Why do I have to say goodbye to the people I love? Everybody else is just turning a blind eye to the fact that it all ends. They're telling themselves comfortable lies. That's how they get through the day. I don't want to be in a world like that. It's scary. Really, really scary. It's all about your perspective on life. It's also kind of amazing because Heart Transplant Girl is literally being given like a second chance at life and she's like, I don't want to take over her body, but like I will if she literally is wanting me to. 
It's it's an interesting dynamic that you don't often see. Because it's absolutely crazy. おやすみなさい。ゆっくり寝てて。もし君の気が変わったら教えて。いつでもいいから。うん。もういいの。これで終わりにするの。so it's like the Sleeping Beauty story of Aurora just falling asleep because her life is falling apart. I see. If that's Mitru's decision, then maybe that's the way it'll have to be. But tell me, what are your thoughts on the matter? Then again, if Michiru never comes back, you'll be able to live freely, right? As your own person, not someone standing. You'll be able to do what you want to do, when you want to do it. Pretty decent deal, don't you think? Don't you want another shot at life? The girl bites a fingernail as she ponders the question. Probably isn't even aware she's doing it. Overcoming her moment of hesitation, the girl delivers her answer in a resolute tone. In other words, you want to respect Mitru's wishes first and foremost. I, w I will give props to the writers, because it would have been, v given this storyline, it would have been really easy to turn other Michiru into a villain. To be like, no, I'm getting my second shot at life. Like, just be like, sh look, she, not even necessarily like, I'm, -ha -ha, this body's by now, but like, just a case of like, hey, she basically wants to die. Of course I'm gonna just take this opportunity and get my second chance at life. But, they, but they're not doing that, which is really interesting. I hope it goes somewhere cool. No matter what they may mean for you, or for that body. Just answer the question. You really believe that what Michiru wants should take precedence, right? Alright then. I slap my hands together smartly. Now we can get started. Wounds of the heart aren't the kind of injury someone else can patch up for you in an afternoon. Only the person suffering can ever really understand how deep their wounds are. Which means at the end of the day, they've got to be the one who figures out how to heal them. Oh no, I don't like this. When Yuji gets an idea, it's almost always a terrible one. In other words, I'm not going to tell Michiru to live or come on out of there just because I say so. I need to know her real feelings first. And I need your cooperation to make that possible. Mm. Okay. When deployed to a battlefield far from their homeland, spending weeks in the field listening to bombs fall all day and night, the majority of people can't stand a normal state of mind. Some lose control over their bladders. Some obsessively count the amount of bullets they've used over and over again. Some start ranting and thrashing around in the middle of the night. Okay, I want to point out, Yuji is like 18 or 19 at the absolute oldest, and he's talking about these military stories. What the butts is up with his backstory? I don't think I want to know. All of those in their way are probably the self-defense mechanisms of human beings eager to retreat into their own minds and escape from a hellish reality. But I am familiar with a way to hold a conversation with people like that, no matter how far they're gone they seem. Maybe familiar isn't the right word. I've experienced it. Personally. It's not exactly a pleasant memory for me, so I can't say I'm eager to do the same thing to someone else, but right now I don't have any other choice. The most important thing is to hear what Michiru herself has to say. There's no time for hesitation. I quickly set about making my preparations. Studying the objects I've brought back to the room with me, Mitru blinks in confusion. 
Are we ever going to learn the name of the alternate personality? Because presumably the alternate personality girl who died and had her heart transplanted into Michiru is not named Michiru. But also she hasn't been introducing herself as anything else. It's just like girl from the backstory. The, cur the curtain is a thick opaque one I borrowed from the AV room. And the lamp is perfectly normal. Although I fiddled with the wiring to attach a makeshift modulator. That's right. We'll be using these to get a hold of Michiru. What? What? <laughs> The only thing that is stopping Yuji from being, like, <laughs> the male version of a Mary Sue is the fact that his personality is stank. <laughs> but it's like, oh, Yuji knows everything about everything, even though he says he doesn't. Probably for the best. I'm not exactly the sort of story that's going to get you dancing with joy. Cutting off this line of conversation, I retrieve a container of ramen candy from my pocket. It's the same one I found in Michiru's room. The medicine she was taking to keep you in check. Your willpower, this medicine, and a little hypnosis are going to drag her out of her hiding place. Um, what? <laughs> That's right! Once you take the medicine, all you have to do is lie down on the bed. Or she could just take the medicine, because that'll suppress her. Once I've explained the basic idea, Michiru swallows up the medicine I offer her, then obediently lies face up on the bed. It's going to be fine. Let the tension out of your shoulders and relax. Just stare up at the ceiling and let your mind go blank. This is the wrong music to be playing in this situation. Pulling the curtain across the window, I plunge the room into complete darkness. Oh, that's what the curtain is for. I thought he was going to use it to, like, hold her down. Then flip on the lamp, guided by the faint glow of fluorescent paint on its switch. An orange-tinted light flashes brightly from the bulb and then fades away just as quickly. <laughs> Meanwhile, the principal br bursts in and is like, What are you doing with that, that curtain? We need it for movie night at the school. Next, I move my hand to the modulator and turn its knobs experimentally. The first alters the light's color, the second changes the speed at which it blinks. Seems to be working as intended. How did you get this in a five minutes? Taking Mitra's pulse from her wrist, then peering down at her pupils, I continue fiddling with the flashing light for a good 20 minutes. About time, I think. Normally, adjusting this sort of device involves the use of expensive electronic equipment, and careful monitoring of the subject's brainwaves and pupillary reflexes. But I'm not out to brainwash Michiru, or cure some condition. All I need to do is place a simple hypnotic suggestion in her mind. Although it requires a certain level of trust with the patient, even a makeshift device like this can serve that purpose. <sighs> Exhaling deeply, I rise to my feet and look down at Michiru. I've stopped flashing the light. In its steady, dim glow, I can make out Michiru's face below me. Her expression seems very peaceful. Michiru. Michiru. Can you hear me? Michiru. Slowly, Michiru's lips begin to move. Why'd you disappear without a word like that? I've been worried. You don't have to apologize. I'm on your side no matter what, okay? So tell me, what do you want to do? Whatever it is, I'll make it happen. But I need to know what you really want. Michiru, answer me! Just as I begin to lose control of my tone, I can see something change in her eyes. Somewhere deep inside her, that Michiru is rising toward the surface. This doesn't really make sense, because multiple times in the past we've talked to Michiru and she was like, I don't, nobody knows what happens when we die, and it's foolish to think that you do. So why does she assume that dying will be the end of pain? Well, great. That's not gonna go well. Saying that and nothing more, Michiru's eyes fall shut. She goes limp on the bed, apparently unconscious. I see. In that case, that's how it'll be. Have to respect your wishes after a- What the- What is about to happen? Is he going to kill her? Like, literally? Is this- Is this about to get into the really dark stuff? 
Because I'm actually on board for that. It is almost Halloween, after all. But, um, what the heck is Yuji planning? Is he literally... Yuji, and with how, with how deluded and deranged his mental state is, he might well just, like, flat out kill Michiru and be like, I did a good... And people are like, Yuji, you're a psychopath. And he's like, <laughs> you knew that from the beginning. I gently wipe the sweat from the girl's forehead with my hand. I'll kill you, Michiru. What the fuck? <laughs> what the heck? Yuji! What on... And okay, um, if we're not heading towards the bad ending, I don't know what ending we are heading towards. <laughs> Are we going to freaking drown her in that lake? Okay, I did not expect the route to take this turn. What on earth? Yuji went from I want the real Michiru back to I'm going to kill Michiru real quickly. What is happening? あらゆる恐怖から守られている。闇は私に膝枕をする。私の肩を抱く。私に密着し、そこから妖怪し、どこからが私で、そうでないのかが曖昧になっていく。これでいいんだ。No. No, it's not how it should be. Somebody's trying to open the door, but I've already decided that I'm never coming out of here again. It's pointless. We should just give up. I'm finished. Michiru. I can hear a voice. A voice that brings back a lot of memories. A voice I'll never hear again. Can you hear me? Michiru. How is his voice reaching me here so deep in the dark? I'm sure I locked the door firmly behind me, but somehow it's slipping in for the cracks trying to reach my heart. I wish he'd cut it out. I already decided to end the pain. I already decided I don't want to be sad anymore. And yet I answer him. Did I choose to reply, or was that her? I've been worried. Those are definitely my words, my feelings, ones I'd left unspoken. What do you want to do? He's asking what I want. Whatever it is, I'll make it happen. There's only one answer. Need to know what you really want. I don't want to lose anything else. I don't want to lose anyone else. Michiru, answer me. But that's an impossible wish, so... No. But even more than that, I don't want to be separated from Yuji. I can see his face above me, very, very close. I'll never see him like this again. I'll never be able to touch him again. But there's nothing I can do about that now. As my consciousness fades slowly away, I hear him speak to me. I'll kill you, Michiru. I see. Being killed by the person I love, huh? Yeah, that might just be the happiest possible ending. That is like the worst possible ending! What are you talking about? Romeo and Juliet was not a happy story. <laughs> Antony and Cleopatra was not a happy story. Titanic was not... A well, wait, they didn't kill each other in Titanic. Actually, they didn't kill each other in Romeo and Juliet. They killed themselves. But you get my point. What are you... This, these people are actually insane. Muhammad Academy is an insane asylum. I'm... I'm that's, that's what I think. And then 
why are we getting these water sound effects? It sounds like we're throwing her in, like, a bathtub and then tying rocks to her. Once again, I slink down into the deep darkness, and as I settle into my home at the bottom of the sea, I hazily wonder what will happen, happen next. I'm pretty much dead already. What's going to change if Yuji kills me? Will even this small flicker of consciousness disappear into nothing? Or maybe it'll just fall a little deeper into an even deeper, darker, and more silent world. I can't even imagine what an afterlife might be like. I'd be lying if I said I wasn't scared. And lonely, of course. But what else can I do? That girl's better than me. She always will be. So this is the way it has to be. You do realize that if he kills you, he kills heart transplant girl as well. Well! I think you, that might have been Yuji killing her. <laughs> so bright. Something's happening, but I can't tell what. Once again, I'm forcibly dragged up out of the darkness. A brilliant light pierces deeply from my eyelids, bringing with it a sharp jolt of pain. Did Yuji kill me? That might explain the sudden dramatic change. Maybe this is the afterlife? Man, there's, there's a lot more... There's a lot more shopping carts in the afterlife than I thought there would be. I don't know about that, though. My eyes really hurt. Isn't everything all peaceful after you die? Or maybe he's still... Who knows if that's the case? It feels like my body's being carried alone inside something. I can feel the vibrations of wheels turning over the floors below. It's not a car. Nothing with an engine. This is something much more primitive. It's a shopping cart! That's right. It's just like the times they carted me for the hospital ha hallways. But somehow this feels a lot stuffier. Wonder why this cart is so different. Okay, what is this? What's going on? I decided to never come back to this world, but for some reason I'm still alive. And yet I can't open my eyes. Not because it's too bright or anything like that. I literally can't get my eyelids to budge. A moment later I realize there's an even larger problem. It's not just my eyes. I can't move my arms or legs either. I can't even speak. You might be dead. This is probably a little hard to believe, but... Is Yuji the villain in this story? It... You know, I, that would be a pretty great twist. And it's not it wouldn't even be that much of a twist, because Yuji's already had kind of sociopathic tendencies. I can hear Yuji speaking. I'm definitely alive. This isn't the afterlife. Or he killed himself, too. It happened very suddenly. And from the muffled sound of his voice, I can tell that I'm probably inside some kind of a box. Michiru's dead. I told you guys she was suffering from anemia, but that was a lie. Her hospitalization was for a much more serious disease. The exam results really did look favorable, but last night her, condi her condition took an abrupt turn for the worse. It's a real shame, but there was nothing they could do. Oh my gosh, he killed Michiru, and he's like, it was the doctor, <laughs> not the doctors. He's like, yeah, she just had like a fatal illness, guys? I don't know. Oh my gosh, this guy is an actual psychopath. What is going on? I died? I mean, yeah, that was the plan. I was going to die and let the other me take over, but something's wrong here. I'm lying inside a box, being treated like someone who's really dead. Well, you told him you wanted to die, and he's like, Okay, I kill you now. <laughs> Bazooka. Boom. A box with a dead person inside. I guess I'm lying in a coffin, then. Does that mean there's a glass window up at the top? I hope not. I don't want to know what my face looks like right now. It's not the Snow White casket. It's probably just a regular... How does Yuji have a coffin on hands? What in the world? This... This guy was planning this the whole time. What an... I don't even know how to process this. What is... Does Yuji, like, actually think this is what Michiru really wants? To be dead? And he's like, okay, guess I'll do it. Kills her, and then he's like, oh, guys... No, this is just her her illness. This isn't happening. But he but he had a coffin just on hand, so it seems like this was premeditated. <sighs> ah. Really makes me regret not spending a little more time taking care of my skin. This should be the least of your problems right now, Michiru. Seriously. <laughs> the truth. Normally this wouldn't have been disclosed to you guys either, but I wanted to give you the chance to get some closure. 
Amine's voice is thick with tears. The news of my death seems to have shocked her pretty badly. Yes, Sachi? Hmm. I think you all have some idea of what I'm talking about. Every one of us is here for very private reasons, involving messy, complicated circumstances. Given that, it shouldn't be that surprising for a death to be handled as quietly as possible. Sachi's taking this really well. So is Yuji, but, I mean, Yuji's the culprit. Sachi's voice is trembling, too. Why is this happening? Why is Yuji doing this? You... I love how Michiru, like, is like, I want to die, and Yuji's like, okay, I'll kill you, and she's like, that's a good end, then she's like, wait, Yuji, why are you doing this? But also, Yuji, why are you doing this? Because he's a psycho. I literally half expect Yuji to just be like, by the way, can you all kick in like 20 bucks for me to take the taxi to the f like funeral? <laughs> everyone's getting upset. This isn't what I wanted to happen. I vanish, the other me takes over, and everyone lives happily ever after. That's what I imagined. I can't believe I'm agreeing with Machina, but she's absolutely right. This is many ways messed up. How did they even come up with this story? This is really disturbing. I'm gonna grab hold of Machina so she doesn't thrash around, alright? Even when I consciously try to move, I can't budge. Forget twitching a finger, I can't even blink. I wonder, what's happened to my body? I didn't want to make anyone cry. I didn't want to hurt anyone, but now Makina's bawling. Yumiko doesn't sound like she's been crying. That's good. It'd be too much if they all started weeping over me. I can't see my classmates' faces. I'm walled off from their world. All by myself inside this box. I can only guess from their voices what's occurring around me. I always thought I was alone, but I guess I didn't know what real solitude was until now. I can't speak, I can't see their faces, I can't move a muscle. Maybe I wasn't that cut off from the world after all. My voice was weak and my jokes were crappy, but at least I had friends who'd laugh with me. But a lot of the time they were laughing at you, which was sad. I'm going to take Mitra's body for cremation immediately after- <laughs> Well that's gotta be one of those brutal ways to die! Because it feels like she's still conscious. Either that or maybe she's dead, but her spirit is just watching this from beyond the... I don't know. Yeesh. Wait a second. Why do you have a coffin, but then you're going to cremate her? That, that doesn't make... No, no, no. It's one or the other. You don't do both. It's not like, oh, we cremated the body. Here are the ashes. Now we put them in the coffin and lower it into the ground. Like, no, you get, like, the urn for the ashes. Coffin is if you don't want to do cremation and you want the whole body to still be in one piece. This is weird. <laughs> but then again, I knew that, well, that going into this. Seems like Yuji really does plan to kill me. In that case, before the end, I want to talk to him again. I want to see everyone's faces one more time before I go. But I can't make that request now. I can't even tilt my head slightly, no matter how I try. My body just won't listen. It's like every muscle and nerve in my body is gone, strike at once. I can't do anything but lie still on my back. I don't know if it's related, but my thoughts are moving very sluggishly as well. It's as though someone spun a network of thick spider webs inside my mind. Every thought has to slowly push its way through those cleaning strands. Hmm? Aren't you going to write anything, Sakaki? Why? 
You don't have anything to tell her? <laughs> I'd like to think Yumiko is the one person who's like, I wonder if Yuji is responsible for this. I feel like Yumiko arguably has the best head on her shoulders out of every single character in the whole game. Except, of course, Principal. I see. Still, that doesn't change the fact that this is your last chance. Don't leave yourself any regrets. Hmm. Well, that's your decision to make. I won't say any more. Makana reaches inside the box and places her letter next to my face, then reaches over to stroke my cheek. Her hands... so small. I never expected such a tender gesture from Makana, who's always been like a rambunctious little sister. It kind of startles me. That's Amine's voice. I hear the side of the box creaking slightly as she leaves her letter next to me. Was her chest leaning against the edge of the coffin? Kinda wish I'd been a little more like her in that department. Are any of them gonna, like... If any of them are truly in disbelief, they could at least check her pulse. And then they'll at least be able to see if she's dead or alive. For a moment, I catch a whiff of Sachi's scent. You sure you're all right with this, Akaki? Understood. All right then. This is goodbye. And with that, I died. Okay, that's gotta be the bad ending, right? Nope, we're still going. We're gonna drag this out. Enveloped in shuddering darkness, I'm carted off somewhere. Probably a crematorium. If Yuji was telling the truth. Guess I'm going to be a pile of ashes in a little while. It's kind of a shame. I won't get to read the letters everyone went out of their way to write for me. And I really did want to see their faces before the end. I wanted to see Yuji's face. When I was the one saying goodbye, I was able to prepare myself emotionally. But now that the shoe's on the other foot, I'm kind of at a loss. And then there's that girl. I feel bad about doing this to her. I could have just given her my body. I wonder what she's doing right now. Whoa! Would not have expected Yumiko to have that reaction. Yumiko seems to have grabbed hold of the box and begun to shake it fiercely. I can hear her nails scratching against the wooden lid. Don't interfere, Sakaki. Get off. Appreciate it. Dang, A plus voice acting job for Yumiko's voice actress. Oh no. Yumiko might be in the same boat then. I've never heard Yumiko this upset before. But it's even more surprising to learn that she has fears so similar to my own. <laughs> 